physically here tonight, but we have got him via Skype, so he can keep an eye on things. Um, to those of you who haven't been to one of these events before, they're really informal, really good fun, um, get engaged, get involved. Um, we always like answering a lot of uh, questions and more difficult for the speaker. We've got a great lineup of speakers tonight, but I'm going to let Simon do a bit of an overview of what the event's going to be about. So I'm going to hand over to him, and I hope that you all have a great event. If you need anything, just pull me up. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, good, excellent. So, uh, like Emma said, I'm really upon to be here in person this evening. Um, this is also kind of an experiment because what we found is that quite a few speakers that we've attempted to get up to Edinburgh have been too busy, or because it's you know just an evening event, they're not necessarily um, willing to fly or you know stay overnight uh, to do a talk. So this. If this works, if this experiment succeeds, we may be able to widen our scope of potential speakers by doing more of these uh, remote uh, talks and presentations as opposed to having all our speakers at events in person. So what I'd like to do today is talk about um, uh, really uh, connected health and wellness, but I'll come to that in a moment. I just wanted to start with a few, a few th thank yous. Um, thank you, Emma, of course, for um, coordinating and organizing the event. And to our two guest speakers, that's Gavin Wheeler of Toshiba and Gavin Neat of Neatbox. Um, thank you to Dr. Tim Willis for his continued help and support. And of course, to our sponsors, TechCube and Alan Lloyds. Very, very grateful for their ongoing support. Board. So what we're gonna do now is just hopefully minimize um, the Skype connection and uh, flick over to the slides. Thank you so much. Thanks, Emma. So, increasingly, as a, as a species, the human race is becoming more and more connected. Uh, um, the trouble is that you know, a lot of the technology that's available today is pretty basic, and, um, and tomorrow promises greater accuracy and, um, um, and the, you know, the quality of devices will definitely increase and improve, time progresses. And um, so what, what I'd like to do is actually talk about an event that took place earlier on this month. It's called the uh, Consumer Electronics Show. I don't know if any of you have attended. It is absolutely extraordinary. I wasn't able to make it um, myself in person. But as is the case with many of these live events, they're um, streamed over the internet, so I was able to, to cover the event remotely and get some pretty good um, insights. I would say the, you know, the mega trends are um, health, health and, and wellness technology, um, smart home, drones, uh, and autonomous vehicles, and of course of virtual reality. The event takes place in the Las Vegas every year in early January, and it's where almost every single OEM, with the exception of Apple, attend to launch their latest technology. So like I said, it's a great way to get insights into what's coming um, with regards to uh, everything related to, te to technology. So let's start with um, a, a few of my favorites. I really like this bridge. I thought it was pretty cool. So the, um, this is Samsung's smart bridge, and it's actually got a camera inside, so you can remotely view in real time uh, the contents of your fridge, your smartphone, from anywhere in the world. So if you're grocery shopping, for example, you can see in real time what's in your fridge, so you can remind yourself what needs to be purchased when you're at the, uh, the, the food store. The next product, which I thought was pretty amazing, nice to do with connected health, we'll come to that in a moment, is the um, Ehan 184. Now this is a, I'm told, is more than a prototype, it's actually functional. Um, Obviously, there are regulations that would probably prevent it from being co commercial reality at this point. But it is a, a, a person-sized uh, drone. It um, uh, can take one passenger. It flies autonomously for 23 minutes at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. So it's pretty amazing. However, I would imagine you want to make sure it's fully charged beforehand. 
because there's no mention of an ejector seat or, or a parachute. Um, so uh, I think I'll probably personally give that one a miss, even if I could uh, afford it, which I can't, because uh, I think it's quite an expensive bit of kit. Um, the other um, cool uh, gadgets that were uh, becoming more and more um, popular are hoverboards. But again, um, they're uh, kind of prone to spontaneous combustion. So I think I'll, I'll give that one a miss until they kind of wrinkle out that little bug. So moving on to health tech. So, medical grade fitness trackers um, that actually do have FDA approval are starting to enter the consumer market. The current generation are pretty inaccurate, which is why I think the medical profession have been um, reluctant to use the data generated by them. In fact, Fitbit were recently hit with a class action lawsuit by disgruntled uh, consumers um, due to the inaccuracy of their, their health trackers. So, once these medical grade fitness trackers and health trackers enter the market, coupled with artificial intelligence and big data analysis for more accurate diagnosis and prognosis, the healthcare sector is going to be completely transformed for the better. So in terms of health and well-being um, products, that's what I'm going to focus on today and more consumer rather than uh, uh, industrial B2B. Um, the, uh, the product that I'm going to start off with is actually you know, kind of kid and baby tech and we'll sort of progress from there. This one I've got up um, on the screen is called Mimo. Now this area, by the way, kid and baby tech is, is just expanding massively and, um, and there's huge, huge growth, which is completely understandable because parents need to know that they, if their kids are safe, they need to, to, to be monitored, they feel more comfortable and this, uh, this is no exception. The Mimo app gives an insight into the baby's quality of sleep. Um, sleep activity, their respiration, their body position, skin temperature, and they can actually use the uh, app to receive notifications if uh, uh, there's a regular breathing or wake-ups or rollovers. Next product, similar category, baby tech, Owlet Baby Monitor. It sort of um, looks like a little kind of sock, I don't know if you can see that, um, that just slide onto the baby's foot. And it's another baby monitor. The outlet monitors the baby's oxygen, heart rates, and it actually sounds an alarm if something's uh, amiss on the phone. And parents can actually use it as a baby monitor via the smartphone app to, uh, to, to uh, stream content in real time, video content. I think it's gonna cost around $250 or so. Um, this product's kind of interesting. It's called the Play Brush, and um, it's a uh, um, a device that can be connected to a standard toothbrush. You don't actually have to go and buy a connected toothbrush. It only costs around 40, uh, $49 and uh, using gamification it encourages children to optimize their oral health um, and hygiene which I think is really, really good. Um, kids smartwatches. So this is another growth area, kind of a trend. Um, the the docky watch here um, has um, you know, the, the kind of features you expect, text messaging, um, video conferencing as well. So if the parents want to have a live uh, video conference with the child, they can. Some have GPS trackers to track the children. Um, you know, I suppose there are good and bad aspects about that. A couple of other products, Pip, Squeak, VTech, KiddieZoom, um, all designed for kids around 6 to, to, uh, to 12. And I think my prediction is that we're going to see, I think, kind of kiddie um, fitness trackers. Uh, I think that uh, monitoring their movement and activity, and again, coupling that with, with gamification is going to be a big, a big thing, really uh, to combat the obesity uh, epidemic that, that we're uh, increasingly facing. So along the same lines, ROX is an interactive game for kids. Uh, it uses RFID, movement sensors, light sounds and vibration. Um, it comes with pre-programmed games like Zombie Tag, and again, it's a really great way to get kids healthy and, um, and moving and uh, avoid this uh, obesity ep epidemic that um, are being uh, faced by a lot of uh, uh, families these days. So moving on to adults and athletes. So this is more about sort of optimization of health and fitness and well-being. Let's start with these extraordinary looking devices. This is the DigiSoul Smart Shoe. Pretty expensive, 450 bucks. They've got built-in uh, activity trackers, and they've also got temperature control. So they come with um, an app where you can actually, uh, um, uh, you can control the temperature of your feet. Kind of 
a little bit inspired by Back to the Future, if you ask me. Sculpt Chisel. So this is an interesting product. It won an innovation award, as you can see, and it actually is an app um, with a connected device that can real time measure the composition of your, uh, your muscles, um, bones, and uh, fat content. Um, so it uses a technology called uh, electronic impedance myography, or EIM, and um, I suppose it'd be great for athletes um, who are training, so they, they want to see the improvement conditioning of their muscle tissue, or perhaps an athlete who's trying to overcome some kind of uh, um, you know, injury. I, I could see that, that uh, as a potential um, application. Another interesting device, this is um, a dedicated fat monitor. But the way this works is it actually analyzes compounds in your breath and it measures your body fat. So all you do is just blow into it and it will chart, monitor and keep tabs on your body fat progression. So for, again, athletes or people who want to lose weight, um, prototype stage, so no word on, uh, on cost yet. One of the biggest announcements this year was from Fitbit. They've, um, it's been kind of uh, rumored and speculated for quite some time that they would release a smartwatch and they finally have. It's called Blaze. It's going to cost around $200 um, and it wasn't well received. The company's stock price plummeted about, I think, 20% or more um, on, uh, 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 shortly after the announcement. And this is basically because it really is a lousy smartwatch, in my opinion. And, and therefore, that makes it a pretty expensive fitness tracker. Um, you know, there are so many budget fitness trackers, dedicated um, fitness trackers, that have e-ink, so they're you know, cheap, low-cost displays. They last a very long time. Why things go launch one for $70. Huawei have the Z1, which is $80. Misfit Ray doesn't have a screen at all. It looks like a, like a little band or jewelry. It's only $100, so it's just a very basic fitness tracker. And the thing is, with a watch, it's got to compete against the Apple Watch for that kind of price. It's got to compete against um, Google Wear-powered devices. And I think it's just, it's not, you know, like I said, it's not a great smartwatch, and it's an expensive fitness tracker. So I think they, they haven't quite hit the mark there, but we'll see. So Microsoft have launched the Band 2. This is the most sophisticated fitness tracker on the market certainly in, in terms of the volume of uh, sensors. However, yet again, it is not a medical grade device. It has not been granted FDA approval, so the accuracy of the sensors is still very questionable. But it comes with a, um, an Ermoled uh, um, Gorilla Glass display, optical heart capacitive uh, sensors, uh, galvanic skin response, barometer GPS, ambient light detection, skin temperature. It is packed with a lot of technology Personally, I think it looks a little bit like one of those, you know, court order enforced tagging devices. So no, I don't think it's a great look. So another trend, smart fabrics, smart clothing. A couple of products here that caught my attention. The Hexo Skin shirt. So the company claims that it's the first biometric smart shirt. It collects data. Um, it syncs with apps, and this is really nice actually, it syncs with most of the popular health and fitness apps. So if you use RunKeeper uh, or MapMyRun, you can have that data uh, pushed up to that, um, that uh, particular uh, app. I really don't like it when OEMs kind of silo you into forcing you to use your, your data only via whatever it is, your Night Fit or Jawbone or Fitbit. You know, I like openness, I like the ability to share and port the data. Because we're going to say that data belongs to us. You know, we're the consumers, it's our data. We shouldn't be forced to, to, um, to kind of silo or lock in that data. Uh, also, there's another similar product called Luma Run Shorts that track your speed, distance, running technique. Uh, um, so it's about $150, I think. You can pre order that. So that's, that's quite an interesting product. Is, you know, if, if the the, the, the smart shorts you're wearing pick up that you're not running right, you've got uh, you know, bad form that might lead to injury, the app will actually pick up that data and provide corrective suggestions in terms of your running style and technique. Samsung prototype, it's called the, the Samsung Welt, and it's a, it's a 
a basically a smart belt and it, it monitors your waist size. So if you're putting on a few pounds, it's going to notify you of that, or if you're losing some weight. Um, it's got a, um, uh, a tracker as well built in, so it measures steps and activity. Also, it'll measure you know, your sitting time, so if you've been too uh, um, uh, passive, it'll hopefully give you a notification to, to nudge you to go for a walk or take some exercise. Uh, Samsung wants to license this to, to fashion brands, so I'm not necessarily sure we're going to see a, a Samsung branded wealth anytime soon. This is interesting because it's a, um, a wearable that's actually an attachable. So it's a disposable sensor that you stick to your skin and it lasts a few days and it, um, you use an app to actually scan um, with your phone using your camera the, the UV exposure and it'll actually monitor the amount of UV exposure you're having. So ideal I would imagine if you're going on holiday for example to prevent uh, sun exposure. So. Yeah, it's just an application, it's obviously a brand new exercise for L'Oreal, we developed it, but we'll see this technology, I think, being utilized by lots of medical monitoring type devices. So another trend I've noticed is that trackers are becoming niche. They are being designed for very specific activities, unlike the generic fitness trackers, steps, uh, calories and so on, you know, the Fitbit type devices. What we're seeing is dedicated trackers like the Swimmo, for example, for swimmers. So it's obviously waterproof, and it measures lengths and strokes, and, and uh, again, sort of your, it helps you improve uh, your, your swimming technique. There's a golf one, which I've got here, Golf Buddy, weightlifting. Um, so instead of just general, you know, I find that when I use my fitness tracker and I'm just doing weights, although I've burned a hell of a lot of calories uh, on occasion, that it looks like I've, I've done very little because it's not actually compensating for the fact that I'm doing weights. So the Gym Watch, Atlas, Beast, it will actually monitor weight, um, reps, and so on and so forth. Um, there's one for tennis called the Pulse Play. So again, you know, I think that general fitness um, uh, trackers are going to find it difficult to compete in the marketplace because these types of dedicated, specialized trackers are going to start nibbling away at their market share. Um, you know, the Blaze from Fitbit, you know, I'd say it's a jack of all trades, but a master of none, but it's an exciting sector nonetheless. Another trend, um, mood and stress tracker, trackers. So there aren't very many of these that, that uh, I've come across yet. And so you know, there's lots and lots and lots to measure and monitor your uh, physiology. But of course your, your mind, your brain is just as important. And uh, it's very important to keep an eye on stress levels and mental health. And there's a product called Mellow Mind, which is uh, a wearable headset, and it helps you relax. So it comes with an app of brain training um, uh, kind of tu uh, tutorials to help you meditate, be more mindful, calming. Um, there's another uh, device called the Mood Matrix, which is a, a ring aimed at females. And this device here, again, just a prototype stage, it's called Feel. And I would say it tends to like the mood metric be aimed at a female market. Now that in itself is interesting. Maybe you know, females are more inclined to be more emotionally aware, to, to embrace um, how they're feeling, their stress levels, whereas men maybe are less likely to do that. But they go around um, you know, with a, a mood or stress detector at work, how will that be perceived you know, within a, a more kind of macho environment perhaps. Um, the only sort of mood stress tracker that I could come across that was more masculine was a product called Mindfulness Tracker by Zensorium. Um, but that's it, so there's not much in that space. So it's an interesting, oh and there was a, uh, a wearable called Olive uh, that was crowdfunded, but I noticed when I checked back their page yesterday, and that, again that was a mood tracker very much aimed at females. It was beautifully designed actually. They have failed, so they, they are um, falling. So let's move on to seniors. This category, again, is very, very interesting. Very high growth, lots of potential. Um, I came across this stat, and I can't substantiate it because it sounds pretty extraordinary. But elder care is going to be a huge, huge market, particularly in the States, because if this is true, um, it's estimated that baby boomers will control about 70% of the United States disposable income next year, 2017. 
In what context that is, you know, home expenditure, lifestyle expenditure, I don't know. But either way, it sounds like a phenomenal um, opportunity for service and product providers. So there's a sub sector of the elder care market called assisted, um, sorry, ambient assisted living, AAL. And so any service providers who can provide um, seniors, you know, with products that help particularly with companionship, support, mobility, entertainment, and general assistance with daily activities, I think will do very, very well. This is an example. So this is a company called Sense. Uh, they've got a range of products called Silver Mother. Uh, it's a remote monitoring system for seniors that claims to seamlessly blend into their everyday activities. I will continuously monitor their safety and health um, so that family members and caregivers can, you know, can be rest assured that they're okay. So for example, um, I suspect as part of the range there's an accelerometer um, inside the wearable. So if the, the wearer trips or falls, the accelerometer will know that and immediately send a notification and I suspect there'll be a panic a button available on the device so they can seek help in an emergency. Now the only thing about this is it's a bit, from, in my liking, it's a, it's a little bit sort of big brotherish. You know, who wants really to be monitored 24-7 even if it is by a carer or a family member? But anyway, that's kind of an interesting uh, topic which I think um, uh, Gavin is going to, to have a, um, to discuss in a moment. So another trend, I think this is going to be interesting. So uh, companion robots, robotics, very hot, uh, hot topic, hot area in tech right now. So in Japan, another extraordinary statistic is estimated that about 40 percent of Japan's entire population will be over the age of 65 by 2055. So understandably, the Japanese government are looking at ways to, to deal with this challenge. And so they're looking at companionship robots, and this particular product is called Paro, developed by Japanese OEM, and it's, it's simply a, a soft, cuddly, sealable pup that has a lot of artificial intelligence built in, it's very cute, it's very responsive, um, and essentially uses animal therapy to help comfort and entertain patients who are in extended care facilities. Um, it's not really possible to see right now, but there are videos online, and, and the response is quite endearing, actually. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think it's got potential, definitely. The American toy manufacturer have uh, launched a range called the Joy, the Joy for All range, but it actually only comprises of cats. They come in three colors. But again, they, you know, they're, very, they're not toys. They're, they are very sophisticated robotic devices. Um, you know, when, when, uh, when touched and, uh, and stroked, uh, they respond, they purr, they, they vibrate, they're very lifelike. And although, of course, it, it's not going to replace the, the real thing, if you're in a situation where you can't, you're in a position where you can't have a pet um, for, for whatever reason, and you can't take care of it, this possibly is the next best, uh, best thing, maybe. Um, Chip is a robotic dog, which is very reminiscent. I don't know if anyone out there remembers the Sony's ill-fated iBo. That thing was way ahead of its time. It was a robotic do a dog that was launched in 1991, so a long time ago, it was actually discontinued in 2006. And this particular product, the chip, is kind of, I suppose, a reboot of that. It's being developed by a Canadian-based company. Um, they're in Montreal. They're going through a crowdfunding campaign right now, so it's just a prototype. But they far exceeded their campaign total, so it looks like it will hopefully go into production. So. That's basically my little piece here, but we have two great guest speakers coming up. Like I said, um, we've got Gavin Wheeler from Toshiba, who I know is really well qualified to talk about uh, um, you know, the area of assistant ambient living. Uh, we've also got Gavin Neat, uh, who's got some really interesting technology. And uh, feel free to tweet using the hashtag IoT Edinburgh. Um, of course, the Twitter account is at IoT Edinburgh, and the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash um, IoT Edinburgh. Um, I'm going to be live tweeting myself. I'm going to be watching the event via the live stream. So uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing from the next speaker. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great evening. Any questions? I don't know. Emma, can we